Hello to all you in YouTube world. My name is Scarlett, and I am an atheist and skeptic in progress. I like to contemplate matters of life and philosophy, especially what gives us meaning and purpose. There are any number of questions for atheists in the world, either in blog form or as videos on YouTube. All these list writers claim sincerity that they just want atheists to think through their beliefs or they are interested in a dialogue with atheists. I'm going to be honest here. I think these lists mainly serve to keep Christians nodding along and tithing to their church rather than to dialogue with atheists. If you want to know atheists' thoughts, there are so many blogs and videos out there in which atheists tell their story and talk about what they believe and why. Anyone really interested in hearing atheist answers just needs to type their query into Google. But anyway, the questions for atheist genre fascinates me in a horrifying kind of way, and I perceive that these all follow themes, almost as if believers are copying each other. So today I've compiled what I perceive as the gist of all of these questions. So here goes, all questions for atheists ever. So the first set are the God questions. Why don't you believe in God? If you were once a believer, why aren't you now? I think these are fair questions, and the answers will vary greatly from atheist to atheist. The problem, I think, is that believers who pose this question just want to tell you that you have a bad basis for non-belief. You're too selfish, you ask too much of God, etc. And look, there are no wrong answers for not believing, IMHO. The answer I respect most is that someone looked into the claims of that religion and found they didn't hold up. But just like theists believe for any reason, they were raised in the church or they thought a prayer was answered for some reason, you can lack belief on whatever basis. Even if someone leaves a church because of poor treatment from other members, fine. I mean, if religion is supposed to make people better in some way, but they treat others like crap, then that assertion is clearly wrong. Now, if somebody really listens to your answer and you have a good dialogue, great. But I just feel like a lot of the time, this question is just a setup for a gotcha. But let's move on to the next set of God questions. What would it take for you to believe in God? If you knew God existed, would you worship him? If you knew Jesus was really the son of God, would you accept him as your savior? and variations of this. Again, I think these make for interesting questions. And again, answers will vary. And this is going to depend a lot on the God in question. Granted, I think this set, like the previous one, is just a way for the believer to tell you that your expectations are wrong, that you are stubborn, nothing will change your mind, etc. What gets me, I guess, is that the believer often is not considered why they don't believe in other gods. Sometimes they reference some generic deist kind of god, and sometimes they're thinking of the one they specifically believe in. They might even toggle between some generic idea of god and their specific one. I said it before, and I'll repeat it here. Believers believe for all kinds of reasons, including simply being raised in the belief, and they don't have to justify to other believers why they believe. Now, of all the questions, I think these related to God belief are the only ones really valid to ask atheists. I mean, they're really the only ones relevant to lack of belief. But since most of these questions for atheists come from Christians or Muslims, whose belief serves as the foundation for numerous aspects of their lives, the questions don't usually end there. So let's move on now to the moral set. Where do you get your morals from? Why is murder wrong? Why is anything wrong? Now, if it is a sincere question, it could lead to interesting discussions about what is wrong and why. The kind of question I remember having when I was in college and we stayed up late in the night comparing philosophical musings. Of course, religions like Christianity and Islam claim that their God is the source of their morality and therefore it is superior and objective. This stance doesn't take into consideration that Christians do not follow all of the rules God laid out in the Bible. 
They also take stances on issues that do not appear in the Bible at all. And they have changed their mind on some issues. A famous one is slavery, which is not only allowed in the Bible, it is regulated by the Bible. And even the New Testament doesn't take it back. While the Ten Commandments say murder is wrong, capital punishment is not only allowed, it is demanded in certain circumstances for minute offenses, like, say, picking up sticks on the Sabbath. Bible morality does not take into consideration what is good for individuals or communities. God gets mad on the regular and kills people for minor infractions, like turning around when you are fleeing from your home, which is being destroyed by God, or touching the Ark of the Covenant when the oxen stumble and you think it might fall. Even if it can be said that these people disobeyed God, death is a bit harsh, don't you think? God does not allow for a learning curve for his own people. On the other hand, David coveted a woman and sent her husband to die in war so David could be with her, and he didn't lose God's favor. So there's that. In my opinion, morality is about how we treat each other, what acts we owe each other, what acts we must refrain from doing because they create harm for living beings. And for these purposes, the Bible does not lay out good moral action. But really, appealing to God's morality is about circumventing any real discussion. The religious person can say that their belief is correct because God said so. And God is objectively good, so there is no discussion or debate to be had. And in the same way, the theist can dismiss the atheist's morality because there is no ultimate authority. I would like to point out here that most of the time, believers posing these questions go right to an extreme, like, why is murder wrong? Why is child abuse wrong? They don't ask nuanced questions like, under what circumstances do we allow people to kill or take from another? Appeals to biblical morality really flattens out the moral landscape and skirts a real conversation. The final set of questions relates to assumptions about science or philosophy, usually based on misunderstandings. How do you explain why we're here? How did the universe come into existence? Why is there something rather than nothing? Why are we sentient? How did life come to be? And then insert every science-based question ever, usually concerning origins of the universe or life. These are all interesting questions worth pondering, and science is the best place to go for evidence-based answers and provisional responses. The thing that bothers me about these questions is the assumption that if I can't answer them, or if I don't know the answer, the theist gets to insert their stories that all add up to God did it. Look, you can love science, hate science, understand it perfectly, understand nothing about it at all. It doesn't say anything about the nature of reality. None of it means anything with regard to a deity's existence. Cranks, conspiracy theorists, and theists all like to pull this out. If you don't understand something about the science, then you can't be right about your whole system. Flat earthers will ask if you know the Earth's circumference, how fast it's rotating at the equator, and other minutiae. You might know the answer, or you might be like me. It's not relevant to my day-to-day existence, so I have to look it up if I want that information. The fact that I don't know how to calculate Earth curve or how fast our solar system is moving in our galaxy doesn't mean that photos of the Earth showing its curve are false. The shape of the Earth actually isn't a belief system, and most people don't need to know all of the details. I don't remember how many square feet my house is. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, or that it is not a two-story colonial in a quiet suburban neighborhood. I'm not saying anything original here, but I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. You don't have to know anything about Big Bang cosmology, evolution, abiogenesis, quantum entanglement, or anything scientific really to be an atheist or to question God's existence. And you don't have to feel obligated to do so. Your answers to these questions, or your lack of responses, don't have any bearing on the truth claims of religions. 
Theists need to offer evidence in support of their claims. Preferably, their evidence should be verifiable in some way, not just their say-so. Mainly, though, I think theists ask questions about science so they can knock down the answers. Oh, you don't know how the first living cells came to be? Well, that means my God created it all. Oh, you don't know this minute problem with an explanation? God exists. Look, I'm all for interesting discussions and people asking each other questions. What I would like, though, is for theists to listen to the answers and try to see things from another point of view. This doesn't mean you have to give up your belief system. But it does get tiresome to feel like the questions are part of a script, that the person posing them is going to turn around with some gotcha and tell you how wrong you are. And that's not to mention the misunderstandings of science. The modern age is wonderful and has brought us so much, but one thing we can actually do without is individuals who read a Scientific American article and think they have understood the whole of Big Bang cosmology and then go on to make a three-hour YouTube video about how the scientists are wrong about everything. We would all benefit from a little more humility when speaking outside our field of expertise. Real scientists, I mean those active in a field, are. They will gladly talk your ear off about their tiny patch of interest, but if you veer off of that, they will refrain from saying much. The thing is, questions about science are another way for theists to pretend to have an upper hand and to potentially sway someone who doesn't understand science. God did it isn't really an explanation of anything, but it's easy and it's pat. Science is more complicated. There is a model full of thousands of details. Those details might change, too, as more knowledge comes up, whereas God did it is eternal and unchanging, comforting if you don't like ambiguity. But I repeat, not knowing the science means nothing and is a distractor. Theists have to produce evidence for their belief, not just some incredulous questions about how strange the science is. And really, so far, they haven't produced any. The most I have seen is some equivalent of, isn't it amazing that we exist? So God, yes, it is amazing we exist. The universe, our world, existence makes me feel awe. But that doesn't mean a deity is behind it. Well, there is so much more to say about this, but I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm Scarlett, and I've been giving my life meaning and purpose by making this video. If you like it, you can, you know, YouTube like it and all that stuff. Make a comment down below. Subscribe. All that YouTube stuff. See you in the next one. Bye for now.